Ladies and gentlemen, members and friends, I want to talk a little bit about flavor profiles and finishing. So at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, we use a flavor profiling approach to give each whiskey a flavor profile to make it easier to navigate what you're after when looking through an outturn or a weekly release uh, or at an event. So we use different foot profiles for different casks. A first thing I want to mention about flavor profiles, however, is that cask type is not linked to flavor profile. So let me say that again, cask type has nothing to do with the flavor profile. We've had second fill ex bourbon barrels in the deep, rich and dried fruits profile. We've had unpeated whiskies that have been in peated casks become peated. We've had unpeated whiskies from distilleries that usually do peated whiskey uh, and everything like that. It all comes down to the actual flavor. Perfect example would be something like cask 35.250, bathing in brandy that came out a couple of years ago now. It's a 23 year old whiskey from a first fill ex bourbon barrel in the deep rich and dried fruits profile. You'd often think that deep rich and dried fruits is always things like sherry casks or port casks. It's not the case. It's, it has entirely to do with the actual flavor as determined by the expert tasting panel. So in this case, I've got a deep rich and dried fruits, a uh, lightly peated, a juicy oak and vanilla, and an oily and coastal whiskey. These are all unfortunately all empty. They've all been enjoyed, which is the whole point of good whiskey is to open and enjoy it. Um, so I also want to talk about finishing for a moment here. In the 12 flavor profiles, often you and the whiskey team like to play around with how finishing works. Now, if a whiskey has gone from one cask, matured for a number of years, and then has an extra maturation in another cask, then that's called an extra maturation. And that is changes can change, not always, but will, might, might it be designed to change the flavor profile of a whiskey. A whiskey that, a cask that you and the team might be working on would be maybe sitting in the light and delicate profile for a long time and then it changes direction of it, has a bit of an extra maturation in another cask type, might be the same cask type, it might be going from ex-bourbon to ex-bourbon or ex-bourbon into sherry or sherry into sherry or whatever and that can change the flavor profile entirely. It can even make something that was once deep rich and dried fruits maybe oil, uh, uh, sorry, old and dignified or it might make something that was light and delicate, oily and coastal or whatever happens because the influence of that cask and that extra maturation period, which these days ranges anywhere between three and 10 years extra maturation, uh, will often change the flavor profile entirely, take that whiskey in an entirely new direction and offer something quite different to members, which is always really exciting. That's part of the journey of flavor, part of the journey of discovering these whiskies and actually having a bit of fun with casks in this way. You can then take this adventure, take this journey into the spirit and discover some new things. And a perfect example is cask 52.31, I Dream of Creamy. This was a member favorite. So this was a juicy oak and vanilla 12 year old that had, I think it was 10 years in refill ex bourbon hogshead and then a final cask as it says on label and we'd like to provide full transparency of the wood here in a first fill ex sauternes barrique. Pop a comment below, like this video if you've ever even tried a sauternes uh, like this video if you haven't even tried a sauternes, sort of maybe do both. But like this video either way, oh, that's a, that's a loose cork, but this is an old bottle now. Um, and this provided, that would have provided a lovely, it did provide, sorry, a lovely, sweet, extra layer of complexity to an already fantastic whiskey. So there's this perception sometimes that extra maturation can mean that there's something wrong with the original cask. It's not the case at all. That's a misconception entirely. I've seen this firsthand in the trade. It's often just a case of changing the profile, taking that whiskey in a whole new direction. And that way we get to play around with the flavor profiles, play around with the flavor. And as I say, add entirely new dimensions to an already great whiskey that we then pass through the tasting panel and offer up to members in our turn. Hope that's been enlightening for you. I'll show you now on stream what the 12 flavor profiles look like. You can see how they all look on your screen. You can pick from your flavor profile that way. It makes the enjoyment of whiskey such another level rather than just nitpicking at codes or nitpicking at distillery names when the profile of what's being bottled by the society is often so far removed from that distillery's house style that picking off code doesn't make any sense. Pick off flavor, make flavor your guide, and I'll hope to see you soon. Cheers.